Hey guys, Nate here. I'm one of your interns here at Carl Hayden, and I'm going to be showing you how to take apart the Dell 745 today. Okay, so to get started with your Dell, you've got your case here, and it's a lovely case. To open it up, you are going to pull on this tab right here in front of me. It's on the top of the case. It's got this little loop right here. You slide that back. It pops open the side. You lift it up. You set it to the side. That's done. Next, the very first thing you're going to start with before you touch any of the equipment in here is you are going to ground your hands. How to do that? What I just do is I touch the metal case for the power supply. They should be grounded. You shouldn't have any static junks to the equipment. The very first piece of machinery that we're removing is the CD, to do the, which is this thing right here. So to remove this, what we're going to do is we are going to remove the SATA cable, this orange cable right here. Slide this out, pull it out and back. That one's disconnected. And then you'll also disconnect the power cable, which is right here. This very small one. Put your nail here and slide back. Next it will open. Okay. Important note, don't grab it from the power cable, the cables themselves. You want to grab it from this plastic piece right here. So now that's, that's out of the way, you can actually take the CD out. To remove it, there's this little lever right here which is marked in blue. Pretty easy to spot. It's not hidden whatsoever. Lift up on it and slide the CD tray back. Up out of the way, we're good. Set it off to the side. We'll use that again later for when we're putting it back together, but that's done. Next thing we do is we are going to be removing the hard drive, which is this right here, right behind the heat sink. To remove this, there are two blue levers right here. Push on both of those at the same time. Lean it back and up. Don't remove it all the way out yet because you have cables right here to remove. You're going to take out the SATA cable, which is this blue paper. You can just pull right on that. It pops right out. That one's undone. And then you've also got the power, which is this right here. You can pick this up and rotate it around so you can get a better grip on it. And then grab by the plastic, wiggle this out. It's done. You removed it. That's it. Simple. Set it off to the side. We also have what we have next is we have the heat sink, which is this big piece right here. It's got the diagram for how to remove the hard drive and the CD drive. So even if I didn't explain this well enough, you have pictures of how to remove it. We're going to take that out. Only way to remove that, though, is with screwdriver. You need your handy dandy screwdriver. Stick this off to the side. It's off. There's two screws, a left and right corners here. You're going to obviously righty tidy lefty loosey in this case we're doing lefty loosey since we're removing that's one second one we will remove right here done voila and it's real easy to see i'll get a better view for it it is right here right at the front shouldn't be too hard to miss once you've got that rotate it up and back and you lift it right out. It's got thermal grease. You won't want to get that on anything. It makes a mess. So to protect that, so we don't have to reapply it, and also to protect the table from getting all messed up, we are going to set this where that is facing up. That's it. That's out of the way. Now we can see the meats of the machine, the entire motherboard. Next, we're going to remove the hinge, that way we can get to the CPU better. Again, right, tell you lefty loosey, we're doing lefty loosey. So turn that to the left, turn that to the left until it's completely out. When it is, once it is out, lift it up and out. And the screws are just right here. They're at the two corners, they're right underneath the heat sink for when you're ready to remove it. Set that off to the side. Now we are going to remove the CPU. The CPU is this thing right here with the heat sink is on. That big old heat sink 
sits on this little guy. Again, this is going to have thermal grease. You might get your hands dirty a little bit. It's okay. Your hand wash. To open this latch up to get the CPU out, there's a little lever that you push down. It's right here. You push that down, you pull it away from the little lip, and it pops open. It's open just enough to open the latch right here. You lift it open. To get this out, to keep the cleanest, what I find easiest is, you see this black mark right here? You put your thumb there, lift it up and out, or your fingernail, something, a nail of some sort to lift it up and grab the sides. Now be careful because there are two sides to this. Obviously there's the side with the thermal paste, that'll make a mess if it's laid down, but you also don't want to put the pins here, the bottom of the CPU on the table. That's not good for it either. So what I do is once you have it out, instead of setting it anywhere else, set the thermal paste back onto the heatsink. Just put that end right like how it was taken off. That way it keeps things clean, protects the CPU, everyone's happy. Now, before we move on, we are going to close the latch, just so it's not in our way and we don't break it. That's done. Voila. Now, we need to take out the RAM and the video card. We're going to do the RAM first because that's a little easier. What, how to get to the RAM though, it's underneath this black wire and all these other wires, it's right in here. We're going to have to remove the USB ribbon cable here, up at the front. So, to remove that, which is right up here, just take it from the corner, that's a little awkward, pry it with your thumb, and protect the USB port by keeping your finger in between here, and just peel it out. Out of the way. So once we move these wires out of the way, we can now see our RAM. Our RAM are these two cards right here. There are two of them, and they require two fingers a piece to take apart. See these levers right here on the side? There's one on each side. To take it out, you are going to push down on both of those at the same time. You want to do them at the same time so you don't break things. So we're just going, I'm going to start with this back one here, they use with the black levers. And I'll push it open. It will spring up a little bit. You can just pick it up and move it to the side. See, here's your fancy RAM. So we're going to set this off to the side to protect it. I'll put that on the hard drive. Then we're going to do the same thing with the other stick around. Just pop that open. Pick it up. And lay it down off to the side. Okay, that's out. Next, we're going to take out the video card. This is going to be the most difficult thing to take out. Not because of the steps, but because of how hard it is to actually lift it up out of the slot. To start with, we have to flip up this little latch cover at the back. It's got a blue handle. It'll pry open and lay back to the back so we can get the edge down. Don't forget to lift that up because you're going to wonder, how is this supposed to get out? It won't come out. Next, to actually lift it out, there's another little blue latch right here. You have to hold that back while lifting up from the back here. So right from the middle of the card, right there. This is going to be difficult. It comes a little, it comes real hard and you're not sure if it's actually going to come on. So you're just going to have to keep applying pressure until it slides up out of the way. That's normal, though it is a little tricky. Next, okay, we've got that done. What else do we have left? We've got our motherboard and we've got our power supply. That looks like that's the next thing we're going to take out is our power supply. To take out the power supply, we need to make sure that all of the wires to the, from the power supply are no longer plugged into the motherboard. So just trace the wires. Here's one right here. It's a two by two. That needs to be pulled up out of the way. It's right here up at the front. It's black and yellow cords. So you're going to come up here. There's the plastic housing and then you'll see the little latch. You'll pull on that latch to keep it released and you slide it up and out. It's real simple. It's not too difficult to take out. Then there's one more, since the other two were just plugged into the hard drive and to the DVD drive. There's this big long one right at the back, right by the power supply. 
So that supplies power to the whole motherboard and that's something we're going to take out. Again, you pull on this little latch and wiggle it and pull it up and out. This one is difficult to take out. It's going to require pulling kind of hard to get off. Once that's out, you're done. You just disassembled the power supply off of the motherboard. You can't just slide this out, obviously. It's not moving. To remove it, there's screws at the back. There's three of them right here. One, two, three. Those we'll need to remove before we can continue. So I want to just write how you let you loose of this. When you're done with the screws, put them all together, all the same color types, in one spot so you know where they are, so you don't lose them. It sucks to lose screws. Okay, now that we've got that out, we are going to slide the power supply forward. It slides up forward, and you hear a little thunk off the mount, and you just pick it up, lift it out, make sure it's not wrapped up on any wires, and set that off to the side. There's that one. Okay, we are really close to getting this motherboard out. Next, we are going to remove all of the wires still plugged in to the motherboard, which will be the SATA one, this orange one. We'll take that out. That's out. Here's a blue one. We'll take that one out as well. Come on. This one is blue, and it's the SATA port. We're going to grab it from the plastic. Don't grab it from the wire itself. We have this ribbon cable left. This one is real simple. There's a little yellow loop or some colored loop that will help you grab it. You just put your finger through there and pull up and it pops right out. Set that off to the side. So we have two more wires. We've got this one right there. Comes out real easy. There's a little lever on here that you push down. Then there's another one that's a white one. That one is going to be more difficult. See right up in here. So we'll pull this up and out. There we go. That's it. We're good. Everything is disconnected from our motherboard that needs to be. So now we can actually take it up out of the out of the case. To do so, it's still screwed down. There's four screws, one at each of the four corners here. We're going to use our screwdriver to get those out. You guessed it. Lefty loosey. Okay, we've got all four screws. They're all kept in the same spot off to the side so we don't lose them. Now to actually get the motherboard out, the way this one is set up is it's kind of a tight fit right here. As you can see, there's the ports in the back that are sticking through the case. Then it's pressed right up against this fan. To get this out, you're going to pick up the motherboard and slide it forward as you're pulling out and kind of rotate it up and out. So like so. This is, can be a little tricky because you've got those wires to deal with. So you slide it up and then you can lift it straight out. Now I'm going to set this off the side on the metal case just to protect it a little bit. We'll set this down. That's it. That was it. That's all you have to do. It's real simple. I'm going to close that. Last but not least, we have our fan. This one is real simple to remove. There's just one little latch here. Well, at first, before we can take that latch, we have to remove the ribbon cable here. There's a loop that's black, at least that's how mine is, that you'll pull out. That pulls up out of the way. Now it's no longer connected to the front here. And there's a little latch. You pull on that, pull it back, and it will rotate out. Pull it like so, and it's up and out. That's it. We just removed, we just completely disassembled the Dell. Next, we're going to put it all back together. So we're going to put our fan in, same way it went out. You line up the, there's little hinges here that you have to line up with the case. You'll see it right like so. I don't know how well that shows, but it lines up, you put it back in a place, or you line it up and you push it back in a place until the latch snaps. Push in right by the latch, not necessarily on the latch. 
appears I don't have it lined up properly. That will give you problems. So line that up, rotate it into place, and you'll hear it snap. It's a little tricky to get it in there. Well, maybe you won't hear it snap. It should snap. No, it snaps. Just, you don't hear it. Yeah, it do, you won't hear the snap, apparently, at least not on mine. Next, we are going to put the ribbon cable back in. Slide it off, down, and to the left. You want to put it, slide it up underneath the fan, because if you don't, the motherboard will have a hard time going back into place. It won't sit properly. So you slide the ribbon cable back underneath the fan, then you'll plug the power, the ribbon cable back into its slot right underneath the latch. Okay, why is this not going in? It's a little tricky. It's hard to get your fingers in there. Once that's in place, that's good. We're all set. Next, we're going to put our motherboard back in. So we'll pick up the motherboard, rotate it back around. Now, to put this back in, it's the same way like you took it out. You have to put it in at an angle. So I'll slide this down here, put it into its slot, and I will just guide it gently down. Make sure your wires aren't trapped underneath like mine right here. So that means I'm going to have to lift it up, grab the wire, and set it back down. There we go. That's good. Now let's fasten this down with our four screws, the silver ones, not the black ones. And they go back at the four corners, kind of like the states. There we go. Come on. There we go. So four corners. So make sure it's straight up and down and rotate down until it's snug and won't turn anymore. Don't over tighten, just enough where it's not turning. So you don't really want to go cranking on it because that's a bad idea. Okay, next we are going to put in our video card, this booger, right here. Video, this video card will be a little difficult to put back in. It just is. It's the same way of taking it out. You lift open that latch if you closed it like I did. You'll line this up at the back. Get it all lined up. Before you can go start pushing down on it, you've got to pull on this blue latch. Now, this is going to go in tough. It's not going to go in very easy. So you're going to get it lined up in place. You're going to push down all across it. You don't want to just do one finger. I put my thumb here on oh, my fingers. So once that slides into place, make sure it's down snug so the card is lined up with the hole in the back. And once that's in place, snap the latch down. That's it. You're done. Next, we're going to put in our RAM, the blue sticks right here. This will also be difficult. They only go in, uh, as far as I know, they only go in one way. And the easiest way to tell is there's a label. This label will point towards where the power supply is supposed to go. Line this up, set it down into place. This is where it's going to get difficult. This doesn't like to go in, and you're going to have to push pressure across the whole board. It'll feel like you might potentially break it, just don't wiggle it back and forth, and just push down until it snaps. Once it snaps, it's in place. It is, it is a little concerning, especially if you're doing this for the first time, to put the RAM in because of how difficult it goes in. If you're unsure, don't push it, ask for help. Better be safe than sorry. There's no sense in breaking something if you're uncomfortable. So ask your teacher for help. Next, we're just going to repeat the process with the second one. This one does not get any easier. You just push down until it snaps. Like so. That's it. You've got your RAM back in. That's the hardest part, in my opinion, of the whole board is putting the RAM in. Next, we will put in our power supply. Same way we took it out. We'll line it up with the front here. Slide it back. And before we do anything more, we will re-screw this in. Obviously, righty tighty, lefty loosey, we're doing righty tighty. So line this up and screw it in place. Same thing with the motherboard, with the power supply as with the motherboard. Tighten it down just where it won't turn anymore. No need to over tighten. 
it's not like we're trying to prevent it from moving. It's not going to be moving around. The whole case won't be moving around, so don't over tighten. Just tighten enough to where it won't go anymore. And we got our third one here. Okay, that's in place. Next, we are going to, before we go any farther, because if we try and do this after I plug in this big ribbon here, it will be more difficult. We are going to re-plug in the SATA cords as well as the ribbon cable. I'm going to do the ribbon cable first because it's more difficult in my opinion. But as long as you get these three in, no big deal. Same, the yellow loop will go back into the motherboard slot. Once that's in place, you push it down in. It's a little difficult to get it in there sometimes. That's down in place. It's off to the side, we're good. Put our orange SATA cord in the blue slot. You'd think it'd be the blue SATA cord in the blue slot, but no, not necessarily. Just put that there, like so. That's out of the way, because that's the shorter one. It's going to go to the CD player. Then we've got our blue SATA cord. We're going to put the, the straight end, the one that goes from the cord to the plastic, and it's straight across not the one that bends at a 90 degree angle. We're going to plug that one into the black port. So put this down into place. Like so. That will go to our hard drive. We've got that back in. So now we can proceed with, with plugging the power supply cables in. So I'm going to put this black, one, this big one in to the motherboard, right like so. It goes in easy. Comes out hard, but it goes in easy this yellow cord, the 2x2, two two, will go in over here, just like we took it out. That will snap down into place. Good solid snap, so you know. Now, all we've got left for before we start putting on the big stuff is the CPU. So we're going to pick this up off carefully because it still has the thermal grease on it. We are going to put this back into place. So we're going to reopen it with this little latch. It'll be a lot easier to open this latch without the CPU than with it. We'll lift it up. Now the CPU can only go in one way. It's real easy to put in because there's little notches in it. I'll put it against here so you can see. You'll see the notches in it right on both ends. There's only one place it lines up with. Also the black mark where it's got this little code where you picked it up with your thumb. That will face towards the outside. We're going to set this down into place. It goes like so. That's good. You'll close this latch, and to continue, you put this lever down and re-put it into place. Locks it down. That's the hardest part with the motherboard. Now we just start putting the big components on. So the hinge, the hinge will only go one way. The little round parts will face towards the CPU, so like so. We'll put that down into place and we'll tighten it down. Again, don't over tighten, just tighten to where it won't turn anymore. Don't go any farther if it won't turn anymore. It turns quite a bit, as you can see. Okay, put this up out of the way, just to make sure I got it. Just go over it again. Now we're going to take our heat sink, the thing the CPU is sitting on, put this back down in. You've got to put it in at an angle, like so. The little circle divots will go into the part of the hinge that is supposed to face towards the CPU. If it doesn't, then you've done it wrong. Take it back out and re flip it around. Then you'll lower this back down in, like so. Only goes so far. Line up the screws, and we and then tighten it down. Same way as you did with the hinge. Only goes so far, then you stop. You do that on both sides. And we'll tighten down. There you go. That's good. We can now put in the hard drive. This is upside down. 
the label will be facing up, not facing down. You're going to set this in, but before you snap it down into place, you're going to grab your blue SATA cord, bring it up underneath the hard drive, and plug it into its slot on the right, if you're looking down at it like we are right now. After we got that in, we have to grab the power cord, and this will go over the top of the CPU. So we can start lowering this down. Did I say CPU? On top of the hard drive. There we go. So we'll lay this closer to the ground, or into the where it snaps. And then we'll plug it into place to the left of the SATA cord. And then you'll push down, it will snap. I think, yes, it snaps. Like so. That's in place, we're almost done. Next, we are going to take the ribbon cable and plug this back into the USB port on the side here. Just push this down into place. And be careful when you're putting this back into place. You don't want to be too rammy. You don't want to go pushing around with your fingers down in there too much because there are capacitors in here like so. And you don't want to break them. If you break them, that is bad. That breaks the motherboard. So, just be mindful of these big, tall, round things. And just make sure you don't break them. So, that's in place. We've just got one last thing before we can close the baby up. And that is the CD drive. We'll put that back in just like we took it out. Slide it into place here. Then you'll slide it forward until it snaps. Like so. It even kind of rings a little bit. Well, now we plug in our SATA cord, which is orange. That goes into the back, like so. so. Plug that in. That's in place. Then you'll take your power cord and slide it into this one that's at a 90 degree angle to it, to the SATA cord. You'll plug that into place. Voila. We've got these two cords right here, the ones that go to the fan. Those are important, too. First one we're going to put in is this little white one. That plugs in on the side here. Then we've got our blue and black and red and yellow one. That one will slide into place and snap. It's not, the it's not a loud snap, just enough. So you'll put the wires down into place, out of the way, so it's not cut. That's it. We've, re we've just rebuilt the S Dell 745. Finish off, we're going to re-put on our, our side panel. Dell is going to face at the top, like you're reading it like so. Slide this down into place. There are little lever latch things that you hook on for the hinge. You slide this down into place. You'll push it down, it will snap. That's it.